Hello everyone and welcome to this video which I normally produce as a, um, an in-class workshop on writing for publication and it's a great way for uh, our students and graduates and colleagues uh, to learn how to disseminate their studies or their research um, in, uh, to a much wider audience. For those of you that don't know me, I'm David Evans and I'm a professor in sexualities and genders at the University of Greenwich. Whenever you're considering writing uh, from your studies, of course there are lots of ways in which you can become an author. Uh, many times you're writing for a particular audience and that may be just one or two markers when you're writing particular assignments. But there are really good um, imperatives for you to get your studies out and to be acknowledged by your peers. So just look at the list here and you'll see lots of different ways that you may be authoring. For many of you that may be considering writing academic articles, um, sometimes in professional journals, or maybe you're writing chapters of textbooks for other professionals. Um, it could be that you're writing formal letters to an editor, or maybe you've invited, been invited to be a guest editor of a particular issue. So you'll see from the list here that there are lots of ways in which you might be writing for publication. One of the first steps to do, and we start this in the workshop, is for the participants to explore any barriers they've got to writing. And that may be a really good opportunity for you now. Uh, pause the video if you want to, and just dot down some barriers that you may find. So certainly lots of people often say, well, there's no time to do it. Or maybe they're nervous, they've never done it before, and they're frightened of failure. Or some people actually feel as if they haven't got much to say, so they're lacking a voice in getting their message out to others. So whatever the barriers are, spend a few moments and just explore your own. The next thing you need to do is some market analysis. Make sure that the message you've got to share with other people um, is going to the right audience. So you have to make sure that your theme is appropriate for the specific format in which you want to present this and how to adapt it for different audiences because you may have a very specialist message to get across so you may decide to write things in specialist uh, journals but also then you might want to write it in a very different way uh, for more general or professional journals to highlight your, your theme and get that across to others. It's really important as well for you to do some market analysis. Check out the audience. Make sure that the audience that you want to write for actually want to hear your message. So whatever it is you want to share with them, you've got to make sure it's going into the right sort of journals or uh, publications. It may be that you're writing for a very specialist audience. So supposing you're doing something on fractured neck of femur. Well, obviously it's with trauma orthopaedics that will be interested in that in the first place. So you might be writing something, even using very technical jargon for specific journals, but then there's nothing stopping you rewriting it in a different way uh, for a more general practice journal. And by, the, uh, by doing that, you've got two different audiences. So of course your language probably need to be different for both of those audiences. When it comes to writing, especially looking at the different styles that people have, it's going to be as well for you to do some market research by actually looking at um, uh, articles already published journals that you're aiming for. It's good for you to get a feel for the in-house language and the layout. Are there specific uh, sections they require or even writing an abstract? Do they want it as one big blob of 50 words, for example, or do they want it in clear sections with subheadings across each of those? So you have to see um, what type of format and style is required for the audience you wish to write for. If you wish to write from um, something that you've already written, maybe it's uh, an assignment dissertation or a thesis, and you might identify that there are lots of different things you can from this piece of work, then there are specific rules here as well. Don't publish the whole work because very few um, journals will publish anything too large. Even if you've written a bachelor dissertation um, of maybe about 7,000 words, you might find that the journal you want to write in says maximum 
is 5,000 5, words, so already you have to edit down. Or if you've written a doctoral thesis, and maybe it's sort of 80 to 100,000 words, and uh, maybe you're being commissioned to write this up textbook, and lots of academic textbooks usually go for around about the 70,000 word mark. So you might not be able to just to represent the work as you've written it. Another difficulty with trying to represent written is the fact that you've written it as a dissertation or a thesis for a audience and therefore they require a particular style. There are guidelines on how you write those it may be different from what a publisher wants as well. So rather than trying to reproduce the whole thing maybe you want to break it down in different chunks and maybe even different audiences. So one of the things you could do is to look for particular threads throughout your work. Maybe certain themes you're going to go for um, in relation to relaying this to the particular audience you're aiming at. You can't just sort of copy and paste big chunks either because then it may seem a little bit disjointed. So this is going to be a rewriting from scratch. So your original ideas and you're using lots of the words from your dissertation or your thesis but you've got to write it um, uh, respectfully for the audience that you're aiming at. And remember uh, that quite often controversy sells. How many journals um, just dislike the fact articles may be submitted and it's just bog standard, same old stuff over and over. So maybe you need to take a different slant on something, quite, quite a unique approach, or certainly something that's going to be controversial and something that's topical as well. A, uh, um, really appeal to the editors of your journal. And it's going to be very important that you show that this is part of your role. So work clinicians and as professionals, don't just think that only academics write for publication. This really should be a part of your role. And especially if you're working um, at academic levels or above. So if you're doing master's studies and doctoral studies, you should be getting your message out, disseminating it to your peers. OK. So and see this as a part of your role. You don't have genius to write either, okay? If you're writing um, uh, assignments at university and if you're passing assignments, then you've certainly got the skills for doing that. So this is just looking at representing skills in a different style for a different audience. Now, uh, if I'm doing this with a group of people as a workshop, then one of the good things to do at this point I'd normally get them to have a look at a whole load of books, article, uh, uh, journal covers. So if I brought in a whole load of journals, and maybe you can picture them now, what are the types of journals that you like reading? Uh, just some of the journals that you access. Try to picture their covers at the moment. So some might have, uh, yeah, well, maybe a big picture on the cover, and it may be you're identifying the specific theme that's being discussed in this particular uh, uh, issue of the journal. Or sometimes the journals may just have a contents on the front. Now that can look deadly dull and boring, uh, but maybe it's appealing to a very different audience as well. So if it's all flashy with loads of pictures, that may be going to one audience. If it's very academic looking, even though that can sometimes look rather boring, that may be appealing to a very different audience. Um, and it's important to take an assignment and think, oh, right, I'll just send this off to a journal and try and get it published. You can't just do it like that, because just as you've written your assignments for university guidelines, journals or book chapters will require a totally different way of representing your work. So it's best not to start off by writing something. You might um journal I want to go for, they often ask for 3,000 words, so I'll write something of 3,000 words and then send it off to them, because you may not be doing it in the format they require. OK, so it's going to be very important that you actually um, read their guidelines, and I'll come on to that a little bit. So when you're doing your market research, you might decide that you've got such a good message, it needs to get out to a whole load of different people, uh, various audiences. OK to restyle your message, but not to self-plagiarise, and that certainly means you write the same article and send it off to more than one uh, journal. That would be unethical to do that.
Okay. In fact, because most journals now require you to submit um, online, like with Turnitin, the anti-plagiarism software that we use at university, so when you submit to journals, they often ask you a few questions that you have to tick in the box. Those questions will be, have you submitted this anywhere else? It's not good practice to do that. You must customise your work just for the particular audience you're going for. Okay? Um, but you can totally rewrite it. So you might write 5,000 words in an academic journal and it's very academic focused the way you write it. But then if you are writing it for a professional journal, which may be sitting around in the coffee room in practice, and people pick these up because they think, I've got 10 minutes to drink a cup of coffee and read a very brief article. So what you could be doing is signposting in a shorter article that you've written something more academic in a different journal. So it's not using the same word. You're adapting your theme for totally different audiences. Just like when you look at some of the national um, newspapers, there's going to be a very different style across each paper. OK, so here says it's important to analyze your market and check out the readership. Ask yourself who actually sits down to read this. Are you um, choosing a journal that's mainly read by students or a journal read by academics, by researchers, by managers, uh, by clinicians? So who's the audience? Uh, you need to, to, to uh, look when, when, when you're considering which journal to write for, ask yourself which audience does this journal act itself to? Then go on to the particular uh, uh, website of that journal and download their author's guidelines. You must follow these perfectly. And it could be as simple as the referencing style. Maybe at university you've used the Harvard referencing style and now you're writing up for a journal that wants it in Quarachi style or some other and it may be that they want uh, numbers for each reference and them in the order in which they appear or alphabetical with Harvard. You must follow the guidelines perfectly. If you don't, then even when you submit it, the very first thing that happens is that an editor looks at the work and if they find errors like this, it'll be back to you immediately. So try to cut down on as many of these barriers by making it as perfect as possible at their required guidelines. Another good point, as in number three here, is to find out who the editor of the journal is and write off to them. And uh, you could do that even before you start uh, writing your article. So the best thing to do is to write to the editor and just explain. Say, look, I've done a particular study or an assignment or dissertation thesis. I've done that and this was the particular theme that I, I focused on. Would you be interested? Writing something for your journal. That's one thing, because they might turn around to you and say, well, thank you very much, but we, we did a special issue on that only in the last volume. So don't bother at this moment in time. So it saves you wasting your time, really. But also it gives them the opportunity to turn around and say to you, yes, we really are interested in this. And uh, right now, and maybe consider particular factors that we would like you to cover. Another good thing. And that's uh, possibly then for some journals, that's when you can consider that they're asking you to write this as opposed to you just sending it without any forewarning. Another thing you might do is when you send the, the editor, you might actually send in the abstract for it. And again, look at their journal, the way in which people normally write abstracts for that journal and do it in that exact form. Because chances are they're going to think, oh, this person's already reading our stuff. They're familiar with our style. This will be a good one to go with. So straight away, you're boosting your chances of being public. When we this is what I get people to do next, uh, this particular exercise. And it's actually narrowing down a broad topic so that it's going to be specific for the audience that you're writing it for. And here's one way to do it. First of all, uh, especially if you've got a big sheet of paper, um, you could write on that your main topic or theme. So supposing your main topic is going to look like um, the role of school nurses in helping to reduce the numbers of unplanned age conceptions. Okay, Ooh, long title. Right, but put that down. There's your main theme. And then what you can do is just look at that and consider three 
key sub-themes that would go under that. So it might be that you the role of school nurses in relationship and sex education. Could be something on the whole phenomenon of teenage pregnancy in schools. Another one might be, what impact can I make? What impact can you make? Now there, that's just three uh, three titles. So do what so you come out with a top title, then consider three main aspects that you might look at. Once you've done that, tree down. So under each of those three subheadings you've written, maybe go down at least five different ideas. Just off the top of your head, what are the five ideas that fit under those themes? Okay. Once you've done that, hopefully you get your eureka moment. You look at it and think, right, look, I've already generated 18 different titles here. If you've done five in each, there's 15 at the top. So you've got 18 different things to consider. And you might think, right, in one article, write about all of this. But if you look at it, you may notice that some things link together. So you might bring out with a whole new approach to your theme in to write about. So by treeing down maybe about five under each one would be enough to generate a whole theme that you feel happy with. Okay and at that point, you might have to go back and start all over again thinking right the focus I'm going to take now is on um, barriers to school nurses being able to talk about teenage pregnancies in a particular um, faith school. Now that was totally different to what it off with but it's what you've generated by thinking about this okay so there's your new time to work with now now you can adapt your theme for different audiences as i mentioned earlier so you might be writing something up in a formal academic journal but also write it for the practice forum as well um that's really important because if you write it for front-facing Staff, say uh, um, you're writing it in journals like Nursing Standard or Nursing Times, you're going to get out a lot of student nurses to newly qualified, uh, to people who have the journal sitting around and they can read it briefly during their coffee break. If on the other hand you write it for academic journals, and especially if you're pursuing an academic career and there's empty and you're getting all these different points from impact factors and that type of thing, then you do have to write for the academic journals. But if you're writing it there, then that would be going out to, for example, that you, you could be attracting that to teachers uh, uh, at universities. And then those teachers can be using your work within the teaching. So on the one hand, you're appealing to frontline staff. On the other hand, you're appealing to those who teach with frontline staff, or maybe even to manage a frontline staff. So it's all according to who you want to see in your audience, and you can always cross-reference yourself, self-plagiarise. And here's a five-step plan, so you do some of these things. First of all, um, publication. You can see that little book on the front called An Introduction to Psychosexual Med Medicine. So check out what is you're writing for and make sure you do that. There's no point in you writing a whole article for a journal that includes the term culture if you're doing nothing about culture. You've got to make sure it's relevant for that audience. Then um, check out uh, what types of things that they write in that journal. Maybe even check out what is written on your topic quite recently in it. Or check out whether other people have on it and maybe it was some time ago so what you want to show now is you're bringing some new knowledge or you're updating what others have said in the past so you're not just repeating stuff you're actually getting a flavor of that publication and how you're taking it forward okay uh, looking at the front cover of the journal again that that you're writing it in a way and for the audience that acts journal and by writing to the uh, uh, to the editor first or meet the author uh, that should say meet the editor really uh, by you introducing yourself to the editor they might actually say to you well you want to write on a particular theme and we've actually got that plan for 12 months so how about you write something for that in 12 months okay so at least you're getting to know them and obviously you have to consider things such as copyright so 
using images or lots of text from other sources, you've got to consider whether you need to get copyright permission for this. If you're using images, more often than not, you definitely do need that. And that's up to you to do it, and you need to get it before you send this off. It's really important that you do get this before you send it off. Another important consideration for you is consider the skills that you've got in relation to what's being required. Okay, so building rapport is going to be uh, firstly with the editor also building it with their, their particular audience. So writing in a way that the audience will appreciate. And certainly then when you go back and you may want to write something else in the future for that same journal, at least known to them and they're known to you. Okay. Also, it's really good, especially for working in all forms of health, social and educational care, that we actually show that we're interested in people as well. Even if you're talking about quite scientific things, how does it improve the lives of people? How does it relate to people? And that shows how we're bridging this theory practice gap, okay? not just task orientated. Also, when you look at the journal, you'll see whether they allow you to use boxes or um, diagrams. Some journals say that if you want to use Images, you as the author have to pay for that as well. Okay, so you might consider what you're doing about diagrams and boxes if they are permitted. And it's good to end your applications with making recommendations. Okay, so you're telling people, well, state of play at the moment, um, these are the things to consider, and now look, recommending here that here's uh, improvements for your future practice. So it's fine to make recommendations if it's that sort of publication you're writing for. When it comes to word allocation, obviously you have to look at the author's guidelines and see exactly what they say. But quite often, you might take about the first half of the article actually setting the in different formats. So it might be an introduction, it might be a background, it might be a rationale, for what they say, but a lot of it can be setting the scene. Sometimes the to include you recapping what others have said, but now showing how you take this on further. Show what further developments there are. Uh, recommendations are so important that you might have to show these in different ways. Maybe you're going to use a box or a table or something to make recommendations or bullet points for them and then explain them in more detail in free text underneath. If you write a summary as well as a conclusion, look at the differences as shown so a summary is a precy of your article. So if somebody said to you, uh, what if you just read? You could read them the summary and that neatly summarises uh, what you've said in the whole article, whereas the conclusion is the full full stop at the end of it. This is the point you got to and you shouldn't be adding new materials there. Okay. And when it comes to asking yourself your writing styles, uh, it's... It, you need to develop this just as you would for writing assignments as well. And uh, many people get through first time having to do at least one and sometimes maybe two or three uh, to their work. So when you send the article off, the editor may look at it first and it may come back to the So the editor might say, well, actually, you haven't done the referencing right. You shouldn't make that mistake. But uh, I'm just using this as an example. So they'll send it back to you and ask you to make some changes. Then it normally goes out to reviewers and you might get very different responses. And some th sometimes um, that can be really disheartening for some people because you might get one reviewer that likes it and says, yes, let's accept this. And a reviewer that's saying, no, let's reject it. And it could be, you'll never know, it could be be they're an expert in the field and they think you're just not up to the mark on it. Um, there are different reasons. You must not take this personally, okay? So if at first you don't need, keep on trying. But it's what it's a wonderful learning opportunity to see what the reviewers are saying. And quite often if they're saying, well, no, don't reject, so it is a case of accept, and it could be accept with my corrections or accept with major corrections. Um, just like with a doctoral thesis. So you are resubmitting it to a whole new audience here. So ask you these questions. First of all, what is it you want to say? What's your message? 
Is what you've got to say worthwhile? Is it topical at the moment? Temporary issue that people are considering. So why is it you're writing this now and who wants to hear? And is it relevant for the specific audience that you're going for? Also consider, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the role of the peer reviewers or the editor's role. If you get commissioned by an editor to write a particular piece, it a notion and says, look, I know this type of work you're doing. Would you write something for us? You're being commissioned for that. Journals actually pay for commissioned work. Um, the more academic the journal is, the less chance you'll get paid for it. They think you should feel honest that you're in their publication in the first place. OK, and then what's the role of the peer reviewers? The next thing to consider about your writing style is whether it's substantive. You don't want loads and loads of waffle so that people are thinking, oh, lots of words here, but we're not sure what it means. It's got to be substantive. You've got to have a message to tell people and they need to get. OK, so in that case, write clearly. Another point is you might think, oh, if I'm writing for an academic journal, I must make it sound very academic. And it can sound academic to read it. But when people stop and consider, well, what are they actually saying? That's difficult to understand. Chances are they're going to put it down at that point. If they've got a struggle to understand what you're saying, they're going to put it down. A very good saying I love for a, a, from a book called Teaching Backwards by Griffith and Burns in 2014. If students can't learn the way teachers teach, the teachers need to learn to teach the way students learn. And the same with your authorship here. And the same with writing for an audience here. If they don't understand the way you write, you need to learn to understand the way they'll understand your writing. I think I've got that right. Okay? So make sure that your work is unified. Don't just have a whole load of ideas. When I said at the beginning about choosing um, to tree down and maybe you've got 15 to 18 key words written down, um, don't write on all of those. That's too much to cover, OK? You need a unified text that's going to link one section right through to the other, focused on a few key themes. Be economical with your words. Again, too flowery um, because you want to be substantive saying must have impact okay and make sure it's grammatically acceptable as well so look at the standard and that might even mean and that might even mean um out know, which style of language they use is it british english or is it um, um american english? that could boil down to the spelling as well And I'd say a really good message for you, especially once you send work in and you're waiting for it to go through peer review and then you get the responses. Never let anyone dull your sparkle. If they say that they want corrections, done, that's great. Learn from that. OK, the more you learn from it, the better you'll get for publication. OK, thank you very much for listening. And I hope this is of some use to you. Take care and bye-bye.